Patrick, let's start with gold. Um, none of the explanations I've heard for this collapse, this dramatic collapse, seem to stack up. What's your best take? Um, well, I think it's a good entry point right now. What we did yesterday, gold price fell a lot, obviously, but the other thing that happens with that is implied volatility on gold shot up. So implied volatility on gold is at around 30% right now. So we sold put options, meaning gold will be delivered to us if it falls another $100 from here. We're getting paid a nice premium to do that because volatility is so high. So it, it's a way, if you don't want to catch the falling knife, it's a way to... You, you get paid to do that, and if gold prices fall further, it's a, a very good entry point already, I believe. So essentially, you're um, buying gold? Essentially, we're buying gold, and we use that to finance some call options as well, so we're participating in the upside as well. So we'll get gold put on us if it falls further, and that's financed us to participate in any bounces in gold from here. All the monetary stimulus, the printing of money, that is going to be favorable for gold in the medium term. But right now, it's, uh, you can't really value gold, and that's the problem with it. Okay. When you do see negative momentum, it can uh, be self-fulfilling that there's a lot of momentum behind it. Okay, and uh, the, the terrible events in Boston yesterday, um, what's that going to do to investor sentiment, which appeared to be already quite fragile? Yeah, I think with the fragile sentiment that was there already, that uh, didn't help. I don't think it's meaningful beyond the, uh, a day or two window on this. But uh, just given the environment where people were quite risk averse, there was a lot of selling pressure already. I think, I think that probably added to it. Okay, and this, uh, you know, uh, we're what, halfway through April. The old saying, sell in May, go away, it seems to have come to the stock market investor's mindset a month early. It has. Yeah, the last... Uh, this is the fourth year in a row now, I think, where you've seen a pretty significant sell-off in risk assets uh, now. And uh, the saying, maybe sell in April, maybe change to that. But there has been a very strong move in risk assets, particularly stocks, in the, the first quarter of the year. And I think it's, it shouldn't be unexpected anyway that we're seeing a bit of a correction. Anytime there is a big move to the upside, without any real change in the fundamentals, there's been some strong numbers, some streak no, weak numbers on the economic side of things. But a, a bit of pause to catch your breath. Equities still look attractive at this point, though. So equities look attractive. Gold looks attractive to you. Um, what else looks attractive? Well, equities and gold, are, we like them both. Um, currencies, I think you should be in the emerging market currencies away from the developed market, uh, the US dollar, sterling. They're going to continue to print money. Uh, emerging markets have real growth. Uh, China slowed to 7.7, 7.8%. That's still very significant growth while the Eurozone's mired in a recessionary environment. There's going to be a lot of pressure to keep the printing presses going in the West, and I think that favors emerging market currencies.